Now, one of the hardest things to do in the world of dynasty fantasy football is take a losing team and turn it into a winner. Whether it be an aging roster, a bunch of bad trades gone wrong, multiple rookie drafts that came out fruitless, or just plain old inactivity that turned a once exciting roster into a slow grind of misery like being forced to sit through an entire Lord of the Rings marathon. There's eight hours left, but I've got good news for you. We can fix it. And what better way to help you fix your roster than by showing you how I plan to fix one of my own. So my plan is to document and post in parts my steps to making this roster an absolute contender once again. So without further ado, let's see what I got myself into. Now, I had a patron reach out to me the other day and tell me that they had an abandoned roster. And for those of you that are new to the Dynasty format, sometimes these are called orphan teams. Oftentimes, teams become orphans because someone is in too many leagues or doesn't have the time anymore or doesn't want to continue paying to play in a league where they're continuously coming in last place or, I don't know, they're moving into the mountains where they're not going to have internet service. I don't know. All I know is I've heard every excuse under the sun. However, the roster that I stepped into for this abandoned team isn't your traditional dumpster fire where the best thing that you might have going for you is one or two players that are age 29 and still productive and a shot at the top pick in next year's draft. No, no, no. This roster was actually pretty decent from the moment that I acquired it. I mean, what good would it be if it took me six years to complete this renovation? Now, the first order of business is knowing your scoring settings as well as the starting roster rules. If we don't build around these factors, then we're just doing ourselves a disservice. All right, so as you guys can see, this is a 12-team Dynasty PPR League, 12-team right here. You know, I play in 12-team leagues. This is pretty standard. 14-team, 16-team. I'm in a lot of those as well. Depending on how big the rosters are, how many teams are in the league, it's going to change how we're going to make these trades, what positions we're going to go after, what caliber of players at the position we might go after, because sometimes we have to concession. We may not have the currency to achieve tiering up. We might have to take the bottom guy of a particular tier. So we're going to look at that. Um, but let's go through this roster real quick. Uh, pretty standard right here. This is uh, six points per passing touchdown. Uh, six points per rushing touchdown. Like I said, this is a PPR league, so of course that's at play. And then down here, you guys can see that there is tight end premium, which means we've got a 1.5 bonus for receptions to tight end. So that's all pretty stock and standard. So let's go take a look at the roster that I am inheriting because I think you guys are going to roll your eyes once you see it. All right, here we are. We are overlooking at the team now. NTL 1983. Boom. So let's go through this roster. You know, obviously, when we start to look at players in Dynasty, one of the biggest factors is, of course, age oftentimes. And this roster here does have a pretty diverse group of players. Uh, fortunately for me, some of the aging players are elite talents or were elite talents. And the other ones that are a little older just happen to be quarterbacks. So they're going to retain value longer in a dynasty format than some of your receivers that might fall off. So for instance, with Aaron Rodgers getting closer to that 40-year age group, uh, he's one of those age quarterbacks, but he's been so good for so many years in a row now that that value has sustained. We don't know when he retires necessarily, but he has quite a bit of value in this format. So we'll go through the quarterbacks first. Looking at him, we've got Tannehill. Tannehill's still a you know middle of the road in terms of age at the quarterback position. Matt Ryan more towards that Aaron Rodgers older situation. And then we have Carson Wentz who gets the starting job in Washington. A lot of people are unsure if he can retain this job, if it's going to be a one-year sort of gig. So when I'm looking at my quarterback situation right now, it is a bit shaky in my opinion. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers obviously going to get me mega fantasy points. Uh, you know, Ryan Tannehill is a quarterback that I have faith in um, to get production out of him. I think Matt Ryan's going to be good in Indianapolis as well, but we have to consider the age here. And playing in a 12-team league, me sitting on four starting quarterbacks, I have a lot of flexibility to go out and do something because 
assuredly there's a team in this league that's going to need assistance at the quarterback position. And all of these players do have upside. We don't know what Matt Ryan is going to be in Indianapolis, but we know he was good in Atlanta. We know the advanced metrics were still on his side. He's going to go from one of the worst offensive lines in terms of pass protection to one of the better ones in Indy. So his value has risen. Haven't seen Carson Wentz in Washington yet, but we know he's got some value now. And of course, Ryan Tannehill has been a fairly solid starter, a top 12 option over the past few years. So I like the quarterbacks. I think I'm safe, but I'm definitely going to consider making a move to tear up at this position, which is probably going to require me to package up. Let's look at the running backs now. We've got Damian Harris, who's still the starter uh, in New England. I know some people are on the Ramondre Stevenson uh, hype train. I think he's a, a decent player, but to, to my opinion here, Harris is still the guy to own there. Uh, Gaskin is not looking so great these days with the addition of some other players in Miami, Chase Edmonds. Um, and moving down the line here, I, you know, this is kind of my first glance at this roster, and you guys are probably looking at it going, man, that is not a bad roster. That's not the worst roster I've ever seen. It's not the worst roster you've ever seen, and thank God it's not the worst roster you've ever seen. Because, again, this would make it the least interesting rebuild ever. This is essentially playing with house money. I think we can, we can do some really fun things with this roster. And I believe that what I can do with it is actually load it out with some very high-end players. Now, what tends to happen when we do that is we concession a lot of our depth and consolidate it with pieces, and we end up with less depth but higher-end starting caliber players, which is likely the outcome. But we'll see what happens as we build this episode. I just want to roster audit, go through it, decide what it is that I plan to do with this roster, and then we'll put those into action. So looking at the running backs, we looked at the starting running backs. Uh, we've got Cordero Patterson here, who's probably got a year maybe a year and a half, two years of relevance left in him. We'll see. So he's a player that is definitely going to be on the move on this roster. Um, we've got Scott. We've got James White, who's back for at least the year. Don't know what his production will look like. Uh, skimming down the line here. Nobody really else. We've got some rookies down here. We've got uh, Zonovan Knight, Bam Knight. Um, we've got Chandler. So some rookies. A rookie draft was already done. Of course, looking down here, this team still has its first next year, its second next year, its third. Grabbed an additional third, it looks like here, an additional fourth a year out. So big factor here. This is a great sign. When you have a team with this much depth and it still has its first round picks, that is just like, that is chef's kiss. That is so nice to have because oftentimes teams that have rosters that look like this don't often have their first round picks to acquire a Justin Jefferson unless you got it in a rookie draft to get a T. Higgins and a Jefferson on the same roster. Oftentimes, you'll look down and the guy doesn't have his picks. He doesn't own them, and that's a killer. So having that draft capital behind us, entering 2023, a class that is supposedly this incredible class that is headed our direction, to have that on top of the other players on this roster is really, really great. So let's look at the wide receivers because that is truly uh, where the money is going to be made on this roster. So Justin Jefferson, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, top one, top two dynasty asset. DeAndre Hopkins, you know, breached the 30-year-old uh, age group, but he's been very productive. He's suspended to start the year. Doesn't matter. This is a guy that I will look to deal this season for sure. Keenan Allen had that big contract extension a year or two ago. Still very productive. I think we've still got time with him. He's a player I might consider moving, but he also has standalone value this year if I want to use him. Mark Andrews, arguably the best tight end in football, if not top two tight ends in football. So it's just unbelievable to even have a guy of this caliber on this roster. Then there's Calvin Ridley. Still has the allure, don't know when he comes back, don't know how the suspension necessarily plays out overall, but there's still a lot of allure around Ridley. He's probably a guy that I'm going to hold and wait till his situation changes. I would imagine that he does come back to play football in the NFL. Again, not a mind reader, but there's still a lot of value built into Calvin Ridley because of what he did the last time we saw him. T. Higgins, of course, top five dynasty wide receiver at this point. DJ Moore, who backed out of this roster? Find me the man who quit on this roster. My God, this thing is loaded. DJ Moore is a top 10 dynasty option. Had his best year in terms of opportunity last season. 
Uh, quarterback situation, somewhat similar, but he's just one of those guys like Terry McLaurin. We hope that a change comes in the future, but he's still young. His advanced metrics are phenomenal. So we've got DJ Moore here. So when you look at the core of the receiving group, Jefferson, T. Higgins, and DJ Moore, I'm not sure that I'm going to move these guys. I mean, I may move them in an effort to take care of the running back position, but there's not a big reason for me to do anything significant or crazy to this wide receiver trio. I mean, we already have depth on this roster. So I'm going to see if I can do this a different way to build out at my running back position because right now, quarterback is deep and I'm not overly concerned about it right now. Running back is certainly the weakest position that we need to make some moves at, but wide receiver is where the money is going to be made on this team. We have lots of tradable assets. We have a lot of exciting names. I mean, look, in the flex right now, super flex position, right? Can start a quarterback here as well. We have Mike Williams. Mike Williams has a ton of hype this year after the year that he put together last year. I'm not the biggest Mike Williams truther, but I can certainly flip him to a team. I can pair him with a guy like Ryan Tannehill. I can pair him with a guy like Matt Ryan. Um, I can put a couple of these guys together. I can even package Ridley in there if I decided to move him early. And I can probably make my way into a starting running back. Or I can trade up even further to get into one of these upper echelon type of players. I mean, again, looking at some of these aged running backs in the league, whether it's an Aaron Jones, whether it's a... You know, Dalvin's getting a little older. Let's say Zeke Elliott. I can probably flip DeAndre Hopkins potentially straight across with something a little bit smaller to go make my way into a running back like that if I want to be competitive. It's all about how aggressive do you want to be. If you want to tear up to a Jonathan Taylor, to a DeAndre Swift, well, guess what? You're going to have to peel a T. Higgins off of your roster. You're moving a DJ Moore. You're probably breaking the bank on a Justin Jefferson. But if you're willing to tear down a little ways, if you're willing to look at a back-end RB1, if you're willing to look at a you know a, a Dobbins, if you're willing to consider an Eckler, um, these guys are going to come at a lesser price tag and you can make moves with lesser options to go acquire them. So it's, it's a give and take. If you want the pretty roster with the studs at the top, you're going to lack depth and it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. If you're a team like this that's already very talented in a lot of different areas, we can build differently. So, again, looking at this roster as it stands now, quarterbacks, uh, I'll probably make a move there. I would like to get younger, maybe shore one of these up, another younger, strong starter. Um, running back, obviously pretty weak. I would assess that Damian Harris is my only starting running back at this point. Cordero Patterson, kind of, but Harris is the only guy I can really lean on. Um and then at the wide receiver position, of course, Jefferson, Higgins, DJ Moore, that's the three guys I want sitting in this spot right here. You know what? No, I'm going to do it right now. I, I, I'm going to look at this roster. Let's just, let's build this roster in, in, in all of its beauty. I'm going to put this together the way that it should look. We're going to go ahead and bump Patterson up here. We'll go ahead and move Mike Williams. Uh, we're going to put Tannehill here for now. Um, the flex. Let's see, what do we got going on in the flex? Probably throw Mike Williams in for Ridley because he's not even playing football right now. Hopkins is suspended. Um, let's go down and look at some of this depth down here. We have Curtis Samuel who's getting a little bit of buzz. Um, certainly consider moving him. Hunter Henry was putting up a ton of touchdowns last year in New England. Dalton Schultz at tight end. So we've got depth at tight end that we can play with. Um, Braxton Berrios, his name's come up a little bit. So... There are some guys, even Will Fuller. I don't know what happens with Fuller. And when he comes back, he might have a little bit of a lure, enough that we can package him and flip him. So there are some wait and see assets on this roster. But boy, it's got depth. It's got talent. It's got sought after pieces. So that's the plan. I think what we do here is start with the quarterbacks. Look if, you know, search around the league. Go look at the other teams in the league. See who's needy at some of these positions, maybe put together some trade offers and see if we can tear up at quarterback. Um, and then at running back, that's probably the biggest need. So I will look at I will look at the running back position. I'll consider who I'm going to move. We'll look at the rankings. We'll decide, do we want to go after one of these really big name running backs? Do we want to go after a player that's maybe slightly down the list from those guys? I don't know. We need to really consider that. And then at the tight end position, of course, in tight end premium, sitting on Hunter Henry, sitting on Dalton Schultz, who's got some value right now, sitting on Mark Andrews, arguably the best, if not top two, top three tight ends in the whole league. We've got a lot to work with. So let's see what we can come up with. Okay, guys. So we just went over the whole roster. 
surprisingly, this team is really good. I, again, I'm shocked that whoever had this roster actually stepped away from it because it's an incredibly competitive roster from top to bottom. We know that the quarterbacks could use a little bit of fine-tuning, even though we've got depth, and we can go look at this league and see how much depth we have comparative to the rest of the teams in it. Running back is the weakest position, so we're going to go ahead and look at running back and see what we can do there. And then, of course, wide receiver. It is absolutely loaded. What guy? Kudos. <laughs> Round of applause to whoever the previous owner of this roster was because you just, seriously, the wide receivers on this roster are absolutely amazing. And you still have your first round picks next year. You still have your first round picks. Now making assumptions based on the rookies that I saw on this roster, I got to assume that some of that 2022 draft capital was appropriated to some of the players on this roster. I haven't looked back at the information to conclude exactly how it was put together, but based on all the late round picks that I saw, um, in the taxi squads, it's pretty obvious that the 2022 picks were burned somewhere. But anyways, let's look at some of these other rosters in the league. Let's target some of the running backs that we might want to chase, and let's put together a package and send some offers. Okay, now this is an interesting roster right here. This is one of the first rosters that I pulled up. You look at this team right now, Russell Wilson at quarterback, Derrick Henry at running back, you know, obviously getting older, don't know when the wheels are going to fall off of him. Najee Harris, obviously... Uh, you know, top three dynasty running back at this point. And then you look at his wide receivers, question marks around Chase Claypool, Elijah Moore, question marks around him with the addition of Garrett Wilson, Amon Ross St. Brown, questions about whether what we saw from him was real or not. They had Jamison Williams, you know, DJ Chark to this team. Noah Fant at tight end seemed great until Russell Wilson got dealt. And then at the running back position, again, Aaron Jones, Cam Akers, some of these names that I brought up earlier. And we look at Cam Akers. Cam Akers is one of these players that by value has truly slid the most over the past few months, right? Has the Achilles tendon tear, misses some time, comes back faster than anybody expected him to. Suddenly he's performing, uh, you know, not at the level that people had hoped, even though he looked explosive and he saw some volume, he's really slid down in terms of the ranks of Dynasty. So he's a guy that I might target because he's got a soft valuation right now. Chase Edmonds would be another guy that's pretty inexpensive, but you look at this guy, it looks like he pretty much optimized his starting lineup and he's got Chase Edmonds in a flex spot. So that's kind of curious. As we go to his bench though, he's got Tua Tungavailoa, last starter, and pretty much zero depth at the quarterback position. Bridgewater, not sure. Huntley, obviously backup. Kellen Mond, Trask, they're in a very similar boat. Cam Newton not playing anywhere right now. Um, let's keep going down this roster here, see what we come up with. Uh, doesn't look like uh, doesn't look like anybody else of consequence. And the best part about this, when you look at this guy's roster, in addition to that, look what happens down here. His only pick... His first pick in 2023 is a third round pick. So he gave up his second round pick. He gave up his first round pick. This is the type of roster that would be hungry for 2023 draft capital. So that may be one option for me to make my way into a guy like Cam Akers. I'm personally a big believer in Cam Akers. So that's a guy that I'm certainly considering going after. This is what it comes down to, right? We have to make these bold moves. Will the class of 2023 be better than maybe what I can get for Cam Akers, especially potentially straight up? When I look at the roster that I have, I think that this is one of the strongest rosters in the league on the surface. So if that means that the pick that I might give up next year is the 110, 111, 112, if I get Cam Akers, who's still a running back, it's just 23 years old, and kind of got off to a cold start last season, and because of that perception loss value, there may be something I can do here that will cost me a lot less than when Cam Akers finally does start to explode on the scene. Okay, now I talked to you guys earlier about spending less draft capital and trying to get by with inexpensive veteran type options, and this certainly comes into play at the running back position. Oftentimes it's a little easier because as these guys age out, people do want to get off of them before that age apex basically swallows them whole and that value falls off in totality. So let's look at a roster that really sort of embodies those types of players all in one.
So you look at this roster right here, it's actually a really interesting build, right? So we've got Ezekiel Elliott, a player that's signed for multiple seasons. I mean, his contract is ugly. His contract will live on actually beyond Tony Pollard. So that's an interesting caveat to Ezekiel Elliott, who could be a productive option for me. Josh Jacobs, another guy still relatively young. Um, he could have some value if I decided to chase him. This guy's team is pretty decent at the wide receiver position, so I think he feels fairly strong there. Obviously, Kyle Pitts at tight end, one of the top guys in the league if he ascends and, and hits his absolute ceiling. Um, let's keep going down here. So this was the deal, right? So we've got Leonard Fournette. We've got James Conner. These are exactly the types of players that I'm talking about. They're those older running backs that are still productive. You know, Leonard Fournette, 27 and a half years old. James Conner just got that extension. So they both offer that win now upside. If you want to give up less to sort of build up your team and be competitive in a shorter term period, because we know that that candle is going to blow out on both of those players at some point. But again, this is another one of those teams. So he's got Davis Mills at quarterback. Don't know what the long-term answer is there. I assume that Houston enters 2023 and truly considers going after a quarterback of their own, maybe a marquee quarterback. Um, Baker Mayfield, we don't know if he starts again or where he starts. If he does, pretty weak on the Mike Davis, Samaj P. Ryan, Ronald Jones, Kylan Hill. I mean, these guys are all just, they're hard to even trade. I mean, they're not even startable. Ronald Jones might give you a little bit of value in Kansas City, but honestly, nobody wants to roster any of these guys. Um, Marvin Jones, he is the same guy he's been forever. Russell Gage can have some temporary value, but yeah, mostly looking at this roster, I don't see anybody on here. He doesn't have a lot of players of consequence. Um, he's got James Cook down here. It looks like from Buffalo. So that looks like a rookie pick that he put in the taxi position. So looking at that and then going down here further and looking, he doesn't have a 2023 first. So Again, these teams that are hungry for future first-round picks, this is a guy that probably feels decent maybe about having James Cook on the bottom side of that roster. This is a team that I can certainly look to maybe exploit one of these slightly aged running backs if I want to go the less expensive route. But again, I still can't get the thought of Cam Akers out of my head. That may be the route that I go. It may be the Cam Akers route, but that's kind of two different builds, right? Both of these teams have a bit of a drought in some places. Neither of them has draft capital into 2023. And of course, that becomes even more valuable in the future. But we can always flip it today if we're going to get our hands on an asset that is worth giving it up right now. Okay, so here's one. In an effort to retain my future first round pick and try and trim up some of these players that I might not believe in or have a lot of long-term faith in, I've got a deal in mind that I'm going to chase for a running back. So this roster right here, um, really interesting actually. Mac Jones at quarterback, got Taylor, got Swift at running back. So he's very, very confident in his top two. Wide receivers, a bit shaky below that. Darren Waller, good tight end. And then again, Miles Sanders and A.J. Dillon. I'm going to target Dillon here. This guy doesn't appear to have a second starting quarterback um, after Mac Jones. Looks like he's got Naheem Hines stuffed in that position right now. Taylor Heineke, Sam Howell. No real hope at second quarterback in this format. So I am going to try something very subtle in hopes that I get uh, a yes to this deal. It may require a counter in the future. But again, in an effort to not cough up everything that I have, I'm going to attempt this deal. So we're going to go ahead and make a play at A.J. Dillon right here. I'm going to offer Carson Wentz. And I am also going to offer my future second round pick. So let's look at the deal over here. So we're looking at Carson Wentz, age 29, starter in Washington. Sam Howell was drafted, but fifth round pick, not high draft capital behind him. Also has Heineke. Um, future second round pick, which for me should be a late second. We're probably looking at pick number 20, 21, 22. I imagine I'm going to finish in the top three, top four in this league. Of course, it's always hard to predict exactly how you will finish, but there's less risk when I'm coughing up a second round pick for A.J. Dillon, whom for now is a little bit insulated because of the fact that Aaron Jones still exists and Aaron Jones is still going to get a large part of that workload. The other part of this deal that I like is for the time being, as long as I have Aaron Rodgers, I have this 
tethered set of players here. I've got the stack of A.J. Dillon, who caught some passes, and Aaron Rodgers, whom of which I may deal, but A.J. Dillon is still just 24-plus years old, so I like that. So I'm going to send this trade. We're going to see what happens. We'll see if it gets rejected. We'll see if he likes it. Um, trade has been sent off into the ether. So I'm going to roll with that trade for now as I continue to assess this roster and turn it forward. I'm going to do a little more digging. I'll have more trades set up in the future as I show you guys what my plans are to go forward. We'll wait to hear back from this guy. Tell me what you guys think I should do with this roster as you guys have seen it. Let's go look at it one last time before I end this video. I'm going to go click on it right now, bring you guys right back in there so you can see it. Here it is, Rodgers at the top, Damian Harris, Cordell Patterson. Obviously, my receiver trio here is excellent. Mark Andrews, excellent. These are three guys that are very much on the trade block. We'll see what this guy says. They may be a part of a future deal. Ryan Tannehill, trying to retain him as long as I can. Moving down the list here, um, James White, Cameron Brait. Let's slide it a little further. Matt Ryan, obviously value. Carson Wentz, we just tried to deal. Henry at tight end. Uh, Calvin Ridley, again, going to sit on him for a little while. Dalton Schultz might come up in one of these conversations. Let's keep sliding down. Ashton Doolin, Josh Palmer, both have a little bit of value as deep stashes. Then, of course, still sitting on my first-round picks in the future, plus two seconds in the third round in the future. So lots to play with there, guys. Tell me what you think. Tell me what running backs you think I should go after. I'm definitely leaning on the side of being a little more cautious. I'm considering guys like Aaron Jones. I'm considering some of these slightly older options. Maybe I look at Eckler. Maybe I look at a guy like Nick Chubb, who is like Derrick Henry light in the sense that he's not necessarily a pass catcher. He's absolutely dominant as a physical runner, and it seems like he may never disappear. Um, he's pushing 26 and a half years old, so he may have another year plus in his prime, a little more than that. So it's always tough. You don't want to give up too much draft capital and then watch the asset that you acquired fall off the map in the near-term future, but it's a gamble. I have a team that I think can be competitive this year with some just minor moves. So I'm trying to move the needle slightly. So we'll wait to see the counter. But if you guys saw something on my roster that you think I should do, let me know and we'll see if we can make that happen. <laughs>